run my name is valentin as you already know i'm senior devops engineer at softsurf i've been with the company um, for around a year uh, already uh, i'm also a part of the uh, aws cluster um, so our responsibilities uh, include designing, developing, deploying, uh, and maintaining uh, infrastructure and services in, in AWS. Uh, and in today's talk, uh, I'll give you a brief uh, overview of a new feature that AWS recently uh, announced. It's called confirmation hooks. Uh, we'll take a look at uh, what hooks are, what they're used for, uh, where they integrate in the pipeline, um, how you can develop one, and go from from there so yeah okay so on the agenda um i thought it might be a good idea to um start with a small refresher of cloud formation what cloud formation is and how it's used since hooks are related to that um we'll then look at the hooks themselves how they implement it uh what they're used for uh and then we'll look at uh, an example scenario of uh, developing a, a particular hook to check for perform a specific check we'll look at the prerequisites the anatomy of a hook how it looks like uh, how it's or organized uh, how a hook is modeled and implemented uh, then we see how we can uh, make it appear in the AWS console so register it and activate it and then we'll do a quick test uh, with a with a sample cloud formation very simple cloud formation script to see the hook in action see see the login in, in, in action yeah, so it's fairly simple, but I think uh, you'll, you'll find it useful. And uh, I will hope you get some ideas for uh, hooks to implement and, and yeah, how, how this can be used. Um, so let's talk a bit about infrastructure in AWS and, and, and DevOps. Um, I guess one uh, as, as DevOps engineers, um, one, of, one of our main goals is to um, create a process for when it comes to infrastructure and deploying infrastructure, create a process for deploying resources. Um, that follows best practices, reduces friction. Um, so one of some of those goals include um, creating a ideally a fully automated pipeline, end-to-end uh, -end automated. It's not always possible, but get, uh, again, that's the ideal goal. Uh, have full, full automation from end-to-end. -end. We want a pipeline uh, to be repeatable. So this means having um, deterministic runs. Each run is 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 uh, as uh, as the previous one, so you don't get side effects, you, you don't get any unexpected results. We want the infrastructure that we deployed and the services that we deploy uh, to be secure. So this means catching any uh, misconfigurations, vulnerabilities, and security issues. And we also want to have uh, the infrastructure that is deployed to be tested. We want to make sure that. Uh, what is deployed is indeed what in, we intended to, to deploy and it's it's working properly. So those are some of the uh, aims and goals that we have as, as, as best practices. And when it comes to deploying um, infrastructure to AWS, I'm sure that most of you are probably familiar with this, with CloudFormation. Uh, it's uh, infrastructure as code service provided by AWS. Uh, but yeah, as a quick overview, the way it works is uh, you define um, infrastructure and resources using code in the template. In this case, you write uh, YAML or a JSON template where each resource that you want to deploy is defined, the way uh, they are configured is defined, how they interact, probably what parameters do you need, and then upload this to AWS and the confirmation service deals with the actual provisioning of of infrastructure and then uh, the creation of the resources. Just as a quick view for those of you who haven't seen the template, this is, um, zoom in a bit. This is how a template looks like, very simple one. In this case, we create a resource, which is a database instance, and we have some uh, properties that we define. Uh, instance type, engine, so on. You can uh, take note here of master username and master password. Uh, we have we can have some security issues here, which we'll talk a bit about later. Uh, but this is yeah the the, the basic structure. Um, 
And uh, this being infrastructure as code, and we're having YAML and JSON templates, some of the um, same characteristics that apply to our application code, that software engineers write, also applies to automation scripts. So this is both the good and the bad things. Um, for example, the good things is you can check this in as uh, in source control, version control, it and have it have it uh, checked in in Git. Uh, multiple people can contribute to the template. Uh, you can have you can reuse code. You can do static code analysis as as we'll see, and so on. But um, there's also some kind of um, there's also the bad things that are inherited from from application code is. Uh, scripts, call formation scripts are also prone to misconfiguration and logical errors, for example. So this means, let's say there's an engineer who's not familiar with call formation, they've read the documentation, but maybe they misunderstood it. They're trying to deploy some instances, um, but they accidentally configured it such a way that, for example, uh, I don't know, they deploy them in a public subnet where they need to be in a private one. So those kind of misconfigurations or logical errors, some flags are enabled that they, they, they shouldn't be enabled and so on. But I, I think the more interesting part, um, and the, I guess probably more important is the one related to security. <laughs> so for example, you can introduce some vulnerabilities when writing the templates and configuring them. Um, you can create roles with uh, excessive permissions, for example, over privileged roles, which can be used by an attacker. Uh, you can hard code passwords, secrets, or se sensitive data. And these are things that happen, uh, again, maybe not due to skill, but just human error and, and, and the way well, code works and the way that uh, we write uh, scripts works. So um, it's, a, it's a good thing to think about that. And again, a, a good mindset to have is um, this mindset of shifting security to the left. What, what does this mean? Um, shifting security to the leftmost part of the, again, software development life cycle, if you, if you visualize it in a way, meaning you start to think about security as early as possible in the pipeline or even in the actual cycle. You try to um, catch as much issues as early as possible, fail the pipeline as early as possible, uh, compared to, um, again, deploying infrastructure, getting it all the way, getting it deployed, and then thinking about, oh, we need to do some scans or we need to check if, if it's secure or not, or not. Because th this way you've kind of, you've already deployed vulnerable and insecure infrastructure and you've already exposed the uh, account and the, the, the application to the to attackers. So what are some uh, existing solution to this problem of um, having um, misconfigured and vulnerable cloud formation scripts? Um, some solution exists for static code analysis and security scans. Um, I've had the opportunity to work on one of those tools, CF Reaper. It's a Python tool, open source. Uh, it, so it was inspired by CFN NAC, which is again a simple, uh, similar tool. Um, they both work on the same principle uh, where uh, there is, a, you have the concept of rules. So a rule is a uh, some Python code or Ruby or whatever, some a piece of code that is run against uh, your cloud formation template. This piece of code, this rule has some logic in it that checks for something, either a vulnerability, some security issue, some specific configuration, uh, and you had the set of those rules. So let's 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 actually have a quick look for an example. I hope you can clearly see my screen. Uh, this is yeah, this is CF Reaper, an open source tool uh, that does static code analysis and security checks for cloud formation templates. And if we look at rules, just just for example, you can see EC2 security group. Uh, I am roles, policies, uh, S3 bucket policy, S3 bucket versioning. So let's look at this one. So this is uh, an example rule. It's a small Python file. And in this case, this rule will basically check uh, if versioning is enabled for S3 buckets. Uh, if we just have a, if we focus on this line here, it's a very simple check, but 
yeah, it, 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 this is the purpose of the rule. And if uh, versioning is not enabled, you, you add a failure. So you can imagine you have multiple rules and, and, and checks that you want to make. And in this case, if the template doesn't pass, it pass if it will fail the, the pipeline. So that's that's great. Uh, some some drawbacks, I guess. Um, the good and the bad thing, they, they're open source, but you might not get support for that. Uh, you might have to do some modifications yourself. You will have to um, integrate the tool uh, in a in a pipeline yourself. So yeah, those are some things to think about. So I was really happy when I, I read the announcement by, by AWS about hooks. I think it was a couple of months ago already, uh, where they introduced this concept of hooks, which uh, are custom code that can be executed at different stages during the life cycle of a platformation script. So this is the great thing is this is a native solution by AWS. Um, it works on the same principle as 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 uh, CF Reaper and CF and the other open source tool. But again, you get all the benefits from it being a uh, a native solution, get stuff for free, and you don't have to think about management. And it integrates with other services as well. So all the <clears throat> all the standard uh, AWS stuff that you get with, with with their services, which is which is great. So what are hooks? Um, as we saw there, they're custom code that executes in the pre stages of the life cycle of a CloudFormation script. What does this mean? So as you're probably familiar, when you you have a CloudFormation script or a template, when you upload it to uh, uh, AWS to create uh, your infrastructure, you either create a new stack, which creates new infrastructure, you can update an existing stack, which will apply the updates, you can delete that stack as well, which will delete the resources. So the hooks run before each of these stages. <laughs> Uh, meaning that you perform the checks and run the, the rules or the, the hooks uh, before any uh, infrastructure gets deployed, any resources get provisioned, which is which is great. You kind of you're you're, you're uh, shifting uh, security to the left. That's what we talked about earlier. Um, hooks can have one of more targets. Targets in this case means um, AWS resources. So. We'll see later how you define a target, but this means, for example, you want to scan uh, the, the code uh, which creates EC2 instances or IAM roles, S3 buckets, or basically any uh, cloud formation um, resource. And also, uh, hooks can be configured to fail the, uh, the stack creation. You can also uh, write them in such a way to uh, log warnings and not fail. Um, you can trigger some other services. Uh, basically, you can you can go out here and just uh, create what you really need using the, the tools in, in, in AWS, depend, depending on your use case. It's yeah, the imagination is uh, is your limit. Um, so let's uh, think about uh, an example scenario. We want to develop uh, a similar hook to uh, the one that I showed you in CF Reaper, a uh, similar, similar rule, which uh, is very simple. We want to check if versioning is enabled for S3 buckets. It's a, it's a good example. But again, as you saw with the CF Reaper rules, we can check if encryption is enabled, check for our hard coded passwords, overprivileged roles, security groups, any, any custom security issue that you might have encountered that is not covered anywhere else. You can write the code to for it to be to be checked. Uh, so before you start actually developing hooks, um, there's some prerequisites. Uh, I don't. I won't go into too much detail. You can later go through the. There's some good documentation on on AWS if you want to actually try it yourself. But it's all based on the CloudFormation CLI and then uh, the Python language plugin for the CLI. Uh, I mean, a language plugin for the CLI. In this case, we use Python, but uh, other languages are obviously supported. So you need to install that as well. And then you run the CFN in it script, which asks you a few questions. You say you want to create the hook. And the cool thing is it creates some boilerplate code for you, for your hook to get started with, which we'll see uh, now in a second. OK, so modeling and implementation, let's actually dive uh, into the 
some code. Okay. You can all see my editor, I assume. Let me know if you can't and if it's too small. Um, okay. So this is the, uh, on the left, if you see the folder structure, it's kind of, you get something similar when you create your hook. Uh, initially with the script, you get some source code, some configuration files. And I guess the uh, first place that you re really want to look into when you model your hook is the schema, which is the this JSON file here named after your hook, and which I have currently open. Um, this is where you start and where you configure your hook. There are some uh, a few fields that uh, I'll direct your attention to starting with type configuration and properties. So this is um, a set of parameters that you can pass to your hook uh, when it's executed. It's configured via the CLI or the console. I'll show you later how, how it, what it looks like. But in this case, as an example, to illustrate your use case, I've created a excluded bucket suffixes parameter, meaning that for example, we we have some buckets that we really don't want to check if versioning is enabled, and if if we configure if, if if we pass them as a comma separated list, we'll see later how our code will kind of will ignore them. So you can imagine you can use these parameters for any custom configurations that you want to make. Uh, it's like passing parameters to a function and then using them. Uh, after that, if we look at the handlers section. Uh, we see that you have, uh, when you generate the uh, boilerplate code, you get a pre-create, pre-update. There's also a pre-delete uh, handler, which I've removed since we don't need it. But as you remember, these are the stages from the lifecycle uh, when creating, creating CloudFormation scripts. Uh, and here you specify a target, uh, target names in each uh, handler, meaning that which resources do you want to scan uh, in this handler? In our case, it's just the S3 bucket, but imagine you have some more complicated rules. You can specify multiple targets, which then you will get in the code to, to perform analysis on, as we'll see in a bit. Uh, and you also have the permissions field. If you need any special permissions to access any resources. Again, you specify them here the same way you do in, in a, uh, for a, in a IM role, the, the standard AWS of, of specifying permissions. Um, once you've defined your, you've modeled your schema here, uh, you run uh, another uh, command in the CLI, CFN generate, I think it was, which then looks at your schema and generates a bit more code based on your schema. Um, Creates the model here. Uh, we won't have a look at it because this, like, you, as it says here, you don't need to modify this. It's generated code. But what we really want to look into is the handler's pi file here. As you can see, it's uh, yeah, it's a uh, it's, uh, some generated code, uh, which uh, might look a bit intimidating. Um, I'll, I'll direct your attention to the important parts, um, so you get an idea of, of how it works. If we sc scroll down and ignore some of the functions here, and I've collapsed the three generated functions here, uh, which match the handlers. So the pre-create, pre-update, and pre-delete handlers. You can see the decorated school handlers, which are executed again, corresponding to the life cycle of the CloudFormation script before the creation of the uh, stack, before the date, before the deletion. In our case, uh, the Delete handler, we don't use it. So we just pass a success event. Just, yeah, we don't care what happens on deletion in our case, but in some rules, you might want to do some special actions when deleting a stack, do some special checks. So if we minimize that, and we can look uh, at the pre create and pre update. And in this case of uh, this rule, which is checking for if S3 uh, bucket versioning is enabled. The same code is inside the pre-create and pre-update as it's a simple rule. But again, you might have a different, different case depending on the complexity of the rule or the complexity of the check that you're making. So here, let's, let's dissect this a bit. Um, first, 
uh, have a look at the parameters that get passed to, to the function. You have session request, callback, contest, and time configuration. What interests us here is the request uh, object and the type configuration. The request, if we take a peek in the actual source code of the library here, I've opened the, so this is the yeah, CloudFormation CLI Python plugin, uh, just to visualize the interface. So if we scroll down a bit, what we get with the hood context. Uh, we get some useful information, AWS account ID, for example, if you have some complex rules where you run some particular checks that depend on the AWS account, you're running a multi-account environment, you can use that to alter your logic, stack ID, uh target name the target name is the we'll see, we'll see where it used but this is basically the resource name and we'll see how we use it in the code uh target type and target model this is the important stuff this is the equivalent of uh this is basically the cloud formation script and let's go back to the code and i'll show you oops okay so Let's have a look uh, at the very simple example template because before we go back to the code, this is a super simple YAML template that creates a S3 bucket with versioning enabled. Uh, when you uh, specify, uh, when you access the target uh, model, you get the this section of the resource, which is what you want to perform static code analysis and security checks on. And the target type is this, the bucket. So let's see how we use this. Uh, first, we get the target name. It's the S3 bucket, just to just to verify that everything's working, uh, that we are getting past the correct resource. Here we check, in fact, that are we getting an S3 bucket? If we're getting an S3 bucket, let's proceed to validate the rule, which is a separate function we'll, which we'll have a look at passing target model. Before we look at that function, I want to mention that uh, you will see this progress and progress event. Those are used to tell CloudFormation what we're doing and what the status of the check is. So we get, get a, we have a failure, as we've seen here. Uh, right now, we've set it to in progress as we're doing work. Uh, you can get a success and so on. So if we dive deeper in this validate object versioning, which is a custom function uh, that uh, I wrote. Uh, we can check what it does. So validate object versioning. This is the meat of our function. This is where we perform the check. We get, we get past the S3 bucket and the suffixes that I mentioned earlier are passed as parameters. Uh, and first we check if we need to ignore this bucket. If it's in the excluded bucket list, this is where we use the parameter. Then if it's not, we can actually check if versioning is enabled. We access the versioning configuration property, which if we go back to the valid template, we basically see if this is here, version configuration status is enabled. If it's not here, then we fail the rule. We set the st status of failed. It's super simple. I'm sure you get the idea. But here in this, in this part of the code, you can imagine you can do really complex things like checking for specific permissions in a row, if they're related to some other service. Uh, yeah, you can you can go wild here. Um, you can have look at some of the, the example in CF Reaper rules, and then you see that you can get quite complex and you can catch some really, really old stuff that might slip through the cracks. Uh, but in this case, super simple. Is version enabled? Nope. Then we fail. And we return the progress event. Uh, and that's more or less it uh, when uh, the, the, the rule runs. Just, just to recap, so you model the, the, the hook, uh, some code gets generated with these handlers. Then your uh, job is uh, if you are developing the book, of course, the job is to implement the pre-create, pre-update, and pre-delete handlers to do what you want. Uh, and the next step is actually uh, registering and implement the hook, and uh, we'll see how, how this gets done. Uh, so 
Yeah, so that was modeling and implementation. So present. By the way, any any questions, please please stop me. I, I know it's showing code is a bit might be a bit confusing, but yeah, if you have any questions, please let me know. Yep, so, yeah, so we went through all those steps. And I guess uh, the next step. Yeah. Uh, so hello. Uh, yeah. I have one question. Mm -hmm. uh, you uh, showed us a uh, press scripts. Uh, is there any post scripts, post hooks? Sorry. Uh, yeah, good question. So last I checked, uh, it was only pre. I assume I I haven't checked in the past couple of weeks, but uh, I'm sure they will release the uh, post as well. I, uh, unless they have already re released them. But for now, I think they are only pre-hooks. Since this is a fairly new feature, I assume that we can expect them in the in the future. Uh, thank you. No worries. Uh, let's see. Okay, so registering and activating. Um, I, I obviously won't, won't like, go through <laughs> running the commands, but here's a, a, just an overview to see how simple it is. First, you submit. Uh, you run you submit your hook uh, to upload it to the uh, AWS console or to the well to AWS. Then you want to find your uh, hook ARN, and then uh, you uh, set the type configuration. Uh, I've omitted here the, the the code that gets run because I'll, I'll show you in the in the console. Uh, it won't be very very readable. But the idea here is to show three simple commands to uh, register your hooks. And your hook in the in the console. Let me see if I can actually, yeah. Here are the actual commands. Um, yeah, we won't go into details, but uh, this is how you get the hook to the console. And let's actually go to the console and see uh, what it looks like. So if you go to cloud formation, yeah, on the left you see registry. Uh, let's first look at the public extensions because um, you, you can write your own extensions uh, in hooks, but you can also uh, basically use the ones created by either AWS or the community. You can publish your own hooks. So let's, you can see some examples here. Uh, EC2 volume encryption KMS, uh, cluster, EKS cluster logging, there was some I am policy required MFA. You you get the idea of the, the checks that you, you can make and the rules that you write. And it's really easy to enable them here. It's basically click and enable and they run on your uh on your stacks. But I guess the one that we're interested in, uh if we go to activate extensions and look at hooks. Here we can see, so I have the top enabled, but this is this is the one that we uh, we're currently looking at. Uh, and it's enabled and it's enabled for all stacks. Failure mode is failed. You can set it to warn if you want. Uh, if you have versioning. And if we delve deeper, here is a schema. Uh, and if we look at the configuration, we can see where the parameters are defined. So when you register the hook, as we saw in the command, you, you pass this. And here's where you configure the parameters that I mentioned earlier. So in this case, exclude bucket suffixes. If I want to exclude some buckets, I would put them here uh, and they will get passed to the uh, to the hooks when, when they run. Uh, it's, it's a bit, um, right now, it's not super intuitive. <laughs> it, takes, uh, it took me a bit of time to find where this is actually done, but yeah, it's, it's through this UI or through the through the CLI. And if we, we can go through a, through a quick demo, I have a couple, I have two uh, templates that we can try this. Okay, let me first show you the actual template that we're gonna talk. So I have an invalid one and a valid one. Invalid one, just S3 bucket, and that's it. No, uh, no versioning enabled. So we want to, in this case, we want to trigger the failure. And the valid one obviously is with version in the code. So let's let's give it a shot. Uh, if we put the valid one. And we try to run it. Uh, we'll see the 
path execution and hopefully uh, yep, the row should fail. Okay, there we go. So if we look at the failure event here, we get this message, the following hooks failed and a rollback is initiated. Now, if you notice something here <clears throat> that's not super informative, <clears throat> I honestly haven't found, found a way if, if, if you can actually display messages here um, to see why it failed and so on. Uh, right now, we do this by looking at the logs uh, in CloudWatch. So let's, let's look at the logs. Uh, I think it would be super useful to get some more information here, but I guess this is not possible right now. You at least get the name of the hook that failed. So if you go to call formation or groups, and we should see here is a log group for our hook, SD bucket versioning enabled. Uh, and the log hasn't arrived yet, I think, but as it all has the first, yeah, let's, let's check it out. Yeah, here are the logs that get, those are generated in, in the code. Uh, so all the logs, uh, log messages that you run in the code I, are piped and delivered here. Uh, there's a caveat. So of course, you have to uh, configure some permissions for CloudFormation to be able to communicate to CloudWatch. But at the end, you, you get them here and whatever you log will be checked. And again, as you imagine, you can do you can pipe them to another dashboard. You can trigger some alarms or yeah, uh, your imagination is your limit. And so we get a nice little message right? S3 bucket. The name of the bucket does not have object versioning enabled. Mm -hmm. If we have a very quick look at uh, the code, just to tie it all back, go to the handler, if you look at create, uh, no, actually the version check here. And here is the here is the message that we're seeing. Message that is being logged here. So if you lose the if you use the default logger, the logs get uh, piped, and you can see that. Uh, and if we go back, let's let's just for the sake of demo create a, uh, another stack. But this time we will use the Wallet template, which, as you remember, has the version packet as versioning enabled. This should create our uh, our packet. As here we get a nice message, hook invocations completed, resource creation initiated. So the hooks have passed and the resources getting created. Um, so you can imagine from here, like I know this is a super simple example, but any, any interesting checks that you wanna do, uh, you can integrate them in here. And the, 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 the really great thing is this is integrated in AWS, in uh, CloudFormation, you don't have to uh, manage any pipelines, any other configurations. You don't have to support it. Um, it's it's all you get it all for free, as 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 they say. Uh, and and it's a really nice way to improve the security of of, of the infrastructure that you're deploying and um, shift security to the left and catch catch all those. Uh, uh, misconfigurations and security issues as early as possible. Uh, so I think that's all of it. Uh, yes, we did testing only. Yep. So yeah, that's that's a very quick overview. Uh, as I said, it's super simple, but it, it's uh, it has a lot of potential. And I've personally had experience with uh, working on security tools for cloud formation and actually um, trying to catch uh, and. Uh, security issues and, and see this in action. And having is, this as a native tool uh, saves you uh, a lot of trouble. And, and I'm saying this from personal experience, having, having had to, to manage a, a similar tool and develop it and work on it. Um, so yeah, um, thank you for your attention and I'll be absolutely happy to answer any questions. If I can't answer them, I'll, I'll be sure to follow up with, a, with an answer later. Thank you.
Okay, if there are no more questions, Valentin, I want to say thank you. Oh, Olaf, do you have any questions? Yeah, maybe one quick Let's question. Go. Uh, thank you. Uh, maybe I missed something during presentation, but um, uh, uh, question: Are there any um, Amazon resources uh, that we could uh, deploy using CloudFormation, but they are not covered by the possibilities of hooks? Uh, so I can't answer this with 100%, but I'm pretty sure no, because the way uh, the way this works is you. I think you can get basically anything that's uh, inside your confirmation template. You specify the uh, let's let's actually visualize this one sec. Uh, if you go and look at the schema, you specify here the target name. So all the target names are, as you see, are is a cloud formation resource. So as long as you can specify it as a cloud formation resource, I think you should be able to to retrieve it. Um, I imagine there might be some really weird special case for some special function uh, function of cloud formation, but I'm not a hundred percent, but pretty sure that you can you can get uh, you can get the resources if you can specify them as a target. Yep. Thank you. Thank you for the answer. Uh, maybe one more question. It's about uh, stack sets. If we uh, don't update the whole stack, but only is uh, uh, create a, um, uh, a stack set, uh, does it involve uh, the hooks uh, of all uh, the template or just uh, the updated resources? Maybe you you know. <laughs> uh good question. No, I haven't. I haven't actually tried with stack sets. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, but I imagine. Uh, so if, if you think about it, it runs so before create, update, delete. So I imagine it only on the updated resources. But it's me just guessing here. So I'm I can't really answer. I I, I can check. I haven't I haven't tried with stack sets. Uh, or yeah, more complicated setups. Okay, but interesting question. Thanks for that. Okay. If there are no more questions, Valentin, thank you so much. You uh, made a really big contribution to our community. Uh, thanks a lot for this presentation. Thank you. Thank you for your attention, everyone. And dear participants, a small friendly reminder, please don't forget to fill in our feedback form. Thank you for attending our DevOps community events. Uh, see you at our next events and have a good weekend. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you for the presentation.